Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, coming to the stage right now, um, if you didn't go see any of the Jawbreaker shows here in Brooklyn, then you fucked up. Uh, please welcome to the stage uh, one of our all-time favorites, Mr. Blake Schwarzenbach. <laughs> Unless he's out. I oh, know, he's coming up behind you. Oh, nice. <laughs> you did do the wrestling thing. We did the wrestling <laughs> Yes, we talked about this. <laughs> I, I needed to open dive. the ropes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us. Like, this stage must feel so small to you right now. That was a, a Tobias Funke. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a never nude? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So first off, I want to thank you for fucking up my Instagram feed for a month with only giant jawbreaker backdrops. That's all I've seen for maybe like 30, 40 days now. <laughs> Ever since the chronology went out the window. We paid, we spent a lot of money on that banner. Yeah, yeah. there's something people don't realize about those banners is that you are legally uh, bound to make them fire retardant. Mm -hmm. Which costs a lot of fucking money. Retardant. Isn't that what I said? Oh. <laughs> All right. Did you think I, I said did. fire retardant? Yeah. No, I didn't. All right. I, I, or did I? I? Yeah, a little bit. What That's are you right. going to do? So Sometimes you have one of the banners. My question is for both of you now. It's okay. With the banner, because this was the discussion for every show I saw, because I went out to Riot Fest and saw the banner. Did I say that? Super psyched. I, s I did. And uh, who keeps the banner? Like, where does the banner go? Because we. It's gorgeous, but like the banner got... steward. The steward. Yeah, you have also. Sorry, it's a union <laughs> rule that you have to hire a banner steward. Ah, uh, fair enough. So it's local banner, banner wrangler. Local banner four one six four five one. This is going terrible. Um. <laughs> no, you keep it with your stuff. They actually get really small. That's yeah. the incredible. How small thing. does that banner get? It fits probably like what, like a hockey bag. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, you need a good roller, but but that's all it takes. Yeah, it's not like you'd imagine like uh, a, like when a rain delay at a baseball game happens. It's not like that giant thing that sits on the side that's rolled up. Yeah, it's a lot smaller. You carry it around. It could fit in a suitcase. Yeah. Like a Samsonite. Mm -hmm. It's magic fabric. But they do cost a, like a ridiculous amount of money, like something you wouldn't think. Yeah, so when we try to break it out any chance we get, but it only fits in a big room. Mm -hmm. Right, to hang it. Yes. And this is a new one for the newer shows you had it made? We've or never had this? it. This is the first banner we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wow. imagine you had a banner back then. So when, like, I can't imagine, like, you guys were talking, you're like, we probably got to come up with a banner. Like, did someone bring <laughs> Someone this made to you? you get the banner, we, right? It, yeah. We have worked with uh, Bill from Monsula, who, who tour manages Green Day, or oh, okay. did for a long time. He was kind of our inside person who said, here's what you have to do. Right. You're going to do all these things that you don't want to do. For, it was just for Riot Fest. Yeah, yeah. At that point, that's all we were going to do. And he said, you might want to think about a banner. That's like eight grand. And we were like, why would we buy a <laughs> fucking banner from one show? <laughs> I remember thinking the first crazy. time I had to order one of those, and I'm like, thinking about going to like alpha graphics to to order my first roll of like stickers and i'm like oh it'll probably be something like that like like 100 125 something like that right <laughs> so i was like no you need this like super special fabric that you know you're legally this and it's like going to be like ten thousand dollars i'm like fuck you i'm not doing that but then you have to do it right yeah did anyone try to get you to do like some kind of like crazy like production like TV screens or like any like No, we wanted to do that. Yeah. Uh we couldn't borrow we couldn't use anybody else's screens. <laughs> so we uh what we did was we we pulled the whole stage in to make it like a living room was our ambition. Pretty cool. And they just instead of hiring a lighting technician or whatever all this was really expensive. We just we wanted to be close to each other cuz we're a trio. And uh, that's how we did it. We wanted a like a low. I wanted a lamp that would yeah. come down right in the center, <laughs> but that didn't happen. What well, now? What was the thought process to lead up to this riot fest? Because this, the, the rumors had abounded for years, and like, what made it like this is the time? This is when we're going to go for it. Uh, what, uh, so many strange things aligned. It just so happened that we all had the kind of desire and peace of mind to do it, and it, people were having cataclysmic things had just happened in their life. Um, I 
was incarcerated for a short period of time in San Diego County. That's pretty catastrophic. For instance. <laughs> yeah. That's something. I, uh, is that something you're I allowed heard, to talk I about? I had heard tale because you had done... I don't know if I'm some... allowed to talk about it. <laughs> okay. I guess I just did, so... You did. You're good. There's you no can... NDA on this stuff. I mean, we like to think of this as a safe place. Yeah. I mean, I've... do you feel that way? Well, I learned how to protect myself inside. Mm. So, wait, did you... You did real time? In yeah, San I was Diego? in jail for 60 days. Holy shit. In county. Yikes. Wow, that's no joke. San Diego is a no joke. Yeah, yeah. What what led Fuck. up to that? Uh, what got you in jail? The charge. I got me in jail. You got the, you in jail. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair good answer. Um, but the charge is uh, vandalism. Okay. Which I'd like to think is kind of punk rock. It is pretty. That's <laughs> that's, that's a good I attack one. property. Ah, okay. And in the state of Orange County, let's say yeah. they. They really, property is very dear. It's held in higher <laughs> regard than most people. Right. I knew that from Big Lebowski. <laughs> yeah. And then you played some shows to co- kind of get money to come back here. Is that true? I did. Okay, yes. I heard that and I was like, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah what kind of sh- an urgent relief fund. <laughs> uh, just, I just did a couple uh, uh, solo shows. One was a house show in Fullerton and one was a, a club um, just to get money quickly. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, that's great. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't imagine like the jawbreaker thing went very far on the inside. Right? Like it's not like you like met someone in there who's like, oh, jawbreaker dope. Like I'm going to help you out now. Right? No, no. Like no chance. So like what did you, I mean, did you just keep your head down? Like just... Did you think red books like Tim I, Robbins well, the, style? Or? I did keep my head down. I got my I got beaten pretty hard. Shit. One time. Wow. The thing what people don't realize about jail or what I think because I learned this is that they don't tell you when you go into jail what the rules are. Right. The jail rules amongst inmates. Mm-hmm. And they should do this. And I want to actually start uh, advocating on behalf of new inmates to create like a fact sheet of what you can and cannot do. Right. Because jails are racially segregated very fiercely, self-segregated. Yeah. Sure. And there's all these rules about what f- things you can touch, what tables, who you can, uh, can associate with, et cetera. And I had to learn these things by getting beaten. Wow. <laughs> because they don't tell you and then they beat you and then you learn. So what, like, what's a fuck up you did? Like something? I, that- I went in, uh, in the black shower. Oh, oh. shit. Like I, like I know, I go, oh, of course. Like yes. I, this is something I wondered frame about of a reference. Lot. Like I've you been have close. brought this up a lot. I have because I've been close to getting locked up a couple times and I'm like, I'm a Jewish dude. So like the second I get in there, the whites are off the table, right? Yeah, you I'm bet, not you, white in you jail. You've asked who you like, would roll No with. fucking way. And I'd have no crew. You'd no be white. Crew. You'd be white in jail. Even a Jewish you'd would be, a wood. be white in jail? I think so. Would I have to fake it? Well, the choices were you. I got Hebrew on my arm. Um... I don't know. I mean, it's 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 like black, Latino, white, Asian, Arab. Everyone else is in other, right, right, which right. is the Asian kind of panoply. Gotcha. I would um, say this means like kill all Jews in Hebrew. I'd be like, yo, I went deep. <laughs> I didn't. There weren't a lot of white power dudes in the white no. sect there. No, and we, you know, everyone was very affectionate and like looked out for one another. Okay. In terms, it was just uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I mean, I could we could do a whole show about this. Yeah. So what was next ki- time? Get Mike Ness on. We'll talk. I wouldn't about mind <laughs> doing a whole show about this. Like, I mean, music is boring. <laughs> like this is this Definitely. is interesting. This is actually interesting. You know. So what was your state of mind like, sort of, when you got back to New York? Were you did you? I was I was a wreck. I mean, I yeah, I was just uh, damaged, changed. Yeah. And how long ago was this? Two, two and a half years ago. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I realized this is a very long way of answering the question of like, hey, so how'd you guys decide to get back together? <laughs> I, I love this answer. The real story. I don't like I the fact have... that you were locked up, but I like, I mean, you said cataclysmic events. Uh, that's kind it of makes the, the triumph all that greater, right? Yeah, I, yeah it, it does. does. I mean, coming out in front of 40,000 people in Chicago with my parents on the stage and yeah. all our families and everything, having just... You know, gone through something like that was yeah. In was my head, profound. This, this turned into like 
from a cool story to like someone's got to make a movie about this. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have fifty thousand dollars, I will make that I documentary. Just yeah. Stipend it to Laura like literally an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, I think we could pull this off. All right, well, so I know you didn't find any Jawbreaker fans in jail, but there are probably some rich Jawbreaker fans kicking around who would throw 50 Gs out to, For sure. to tell this story. <laughs> Actually, I think I could write a tweet right now, and by the time we're done with this, we could probably get the dough. Fundraise. I'll go fund me this shit. I don't <laughs> that wanna, sounds great. I don't want to do that, though. No. Okay. <laughs> well, that's really up to you. It's yeah. not up to me. All right, so fast, so fast forward. You, you're doing Riot Fest, and you guys are, you guys are uh, back together, rehearsing, whatever. How do you choose... Uh, sorry, I don't want to bore you talking about music, Benny. Uh, how, do you, how, how did you choose the set list? Like, how did you we, come up with the songs? We ch- a little bit like what Brian was saying about Bad Religion. We, we figured we owe it to anybody who's coming. To, like, we've got to play the core most popular songs. The only most popular songs we didn't play were ones we could not play. That just didn't right. sound right. They weren't working. So like Chesterfield King, which is kind of a fan favorite, it just wasn't happening. We mm. tried. A couple I couldn't sing, really. Wow. They were just in too much of a high register for where I'm at mm-hmm. now. But it basically we picked, we just found 10 that were like, we, we got to do these. Mm. And then 10 that we knew we wanted to play really badly. And yeah, because uh, I don't know if I, I haven't seen you guys 25 years ago. I don't know if I ever heard Ache live. And yeah, there were a couple that work now that didn't then. I think bands all have this. You mm-hmm. just It's strange the way your catalog will kind of become viable. And then some songs go out of, I don't know if you've had this, but something's not working. You take it out of rotation. And what was what was it like being back in the room? Like, what, did muscle memory kick in? Like, with you guys, it was pretty. It was pretty intense for the first few practices because we were back in San Francisco. San Francisco has changed so dramatically. You know, the mission is not the mission anymore. But we have these songs that were very much of the mission, and the same three people. So it was emotionally kind of exhausting. We'd play for five hours, and and I was going through like a lot of reliving those stories in the songs and you know that that was kind of exhausting then it became very fun once we started to figure them out and know that it was going to work it was more like hey let's just play yeah Yeah. is there any things that were like um sometimes when i kick back to older songs i'm like jesus christ i don't know why i wrote that part but it's ridiculous and i never write it now but are parts like that like difficult to like get a hold of again you know, something that you were doing out of pure excitement maybe 20 years ago and and now you just have to try and pull it off? Yeah. I, we watched a lot of uh, YouTube videos <laughs> to learn the basic. I, I looked at tab charts online. <laughs> really? Just to, get, just to get an overview. You know? Were they pretty accurate, the tab Close charts? Enough. Yeah. Close enough. And then once I got in the, in the kind of zone, I was like, oh, I, that, but it's me, so it's going to be wrong and idiosyncratic. And, right, right. You know, I kind of, some of those weird three-fingered chords came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we found most of the things just by, through repetition and, and heat. Right. <laughs> I had heard you say at some point that, um, you know, part of the reticence for like getting Jawbreaker back together wasn't the whole political and social element behind it, but more just like the physical part. Like, like I literally just can't get on stage and execute these songs like the way they were. Is there any like what did you have to do to get ready for these shows like physically? Um, just play a lot, really. Yeah. I didn't start training Till no, I did start training a little till uh, before Riot Fest. I was in bad shape. Yeah, for a while. So it's just getting the endurance. So you can see it. You know, I've lost like thirty pounds since Riot Fest. <laughs> wow, really crazy. Wow. Yeah, I don't think you had it to lose. I don't think What's people it? realize the physical element of like just playing guitar and singing at the same time for an hour and a half. Yeah, that's for us. That was a deal. long set, and that yeah. we were contracted to do. You know, a, we were playing last, so we had to really. Do a show. There's so a reason that, like Mick Jagger's got a treadmill on his rider and shit. You know, <laughs> we only stay at uh, places with gyms now. Oh, that's good. for me, that's yeah. important. That's my rule. What was yeah. it like, kind of walking out there that Riot Fest show? Kind of walking out to that kind of stage. It, well, I'd been watching the stage for a long time because we were there for three days. Okay, and so, so I knew it. You know, um, but I I did stand in the wings like. 
there were two stages parallel and um and prophets of rage were playing right before we did and it was a little daunting because there's such a show and you could just see it in the next stage that there was these lights and like fireworks and guys jumping around and people flailing in and the crowd. Be real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, God, you know, we're, it's going to be interesting that this little like click, 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 three piece band <laughs> with no lights or ideology really. Um, but I stood, my mom is a, is a long time uh, meditator and Buddhist and she was on stage and there was all these people lined up and I just like sat, leaned up against the wall with these, uh, all these people and I looked over at my mom and she gave me the look that was like, when you go into deep meditation, you know, and you're on some freezing mountain or something and you get the like 2000 yard stare. Mm -hmm. And I did that and I just completely disembodied myself yeah. in preparation, just like I have to not be here at a certain level in order to be here. Sure. And kept that for the first five songs. And then I was, then it was very fun. And I think each of us did that. Like I talked to Adam and Chris and they, everyone had their own place they went into just to get through, just to break the ice. Cool. I mean, it was, and, it was a phenomenal show. And I'm not saying that is like a, a beyond fan. Did anybody here go to Riot Fest? Anybody? Anybody? Flew out there? Yeah, I represent. Hey, thanks. It was phenomenal. It was incendiary. And when I saw you in Brooklyn, because I went all three nights, because that's me, um, uh, thank you to my wife for let, uh, saying, yes, please go. Um, when you, you played Jet Black at one of the shows in Brooklyn, you said, how could that not have been a hit like in 95? <laughs> and I, I, uh, a very good fr a, a friend of ours, uh, Trevor Kelly, posed this question. Um, did you, you know the book Kanye West owes me $300? Uh, by title? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, you know that book? Did you read that book? I did not read that okay. book, no. Uh, it's Jonah's book, and I forgot to bring it, sorry. Uh, but it's I didn't write it, it's got Jensen Carp wrote it. Yeah, but Jensen Carp yeah, wrote you it. You have my physical copy. The copy of it. I have right. belongs to you. Okay. Yeah. We've unpacked it. It's to clear that up. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so in the book, uh, Jensen Carp, uh, it was his rapper, and right when Eminem was getting big, he got signed by Jimmy Iovine. And under the rap name of Hot Carl. Uh, I know I, what that is. John <laughs> and he said, when he, and he talks in the story about when he signed to Jimmy Iovine, he said, like, you're not going to fuck me over, are you? You're not just signing me to hold on to my record so that I'm not going to compete with uh, Eminem as, like, another, you know, white rapper kid. And Trevor had this idea of the question of, he said, you know, when Dear You came out, it came out, and I remember buying it, and everyone was excited. Then all of a sudden, it seemed like it wasn't being... They, they stopped pushing a lot of copies. Mm. And, and I'm not trying to go conspiracy on here, but do you think there was a conspiracy? To suppress you, the to success suppress you, of the album? Because you guys were so damn good. I'm not saying that like to you know, uh, blow smoke, but like it was such a solid record, and there were other punk bands at the time with popularity, and I don't know if that ever... What, what would be the end game of that conspiracy? <laughs> Like what were uh, they for them to sell more because they don't realize that you guys are much better, you know what I mean? Or or to keep the competition away. Oh. Sell more records, I guess, is the end game, which at that particular time people enjoyed doing. Right. You could say no. <laughs> <laughs> no I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I th you know, I think it was just a um kind of a heady record in a time that was about in radio world that still is about instant meaning and content right. and it was like it's a slower burn kind of made sense to me i never thought really i don't think any of us thought we would be this big radio band mm -hmm. they're kind of downer songs and they they take a while to sink in was i mean for us it seemed hook laden yeah i thought like yeah. oh, this sounds like a radio ready song yeah, I but so. i had a question about but, another thing uh at the you said at the brooklyn show you kind of you called out jesse lacy at the first show yeah. And, and I was curious, I felt like all my friends were like, Blake knows who Jesse Lacey is? I know, I felt, you know, <laughs> do, you, do you dignify that with like bringing up someone's name who, I don't know them. I don't know okay. their band. Yeah. I just know their. Why did you feel like it was, that was important? Because it's part you? of this, this culture that I'm associated with. Right. Mostly in the press, not in real real life. These aren't my friends or anything. We don't hang out at the pop punk ranch. 
Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Brad, the, you the warp the tour, room. basically. Where is that right? ranch? <laughs> But I, no, I felt like, well, I could say something about it, that it's not just in Hollywood, you know. And yeah. It's actually been pretty rapacious in, in male punk music for since I began. There's always been rape allegations and shady people who glom onto scenes and kind of predate. Mm-hmm. Predate? Can you say that? Yeah. Sounds- Preditate? I don't know the... Oh my I like God, it. verb would be. I don't care if it's real. Act predacious within that community and then get shunned and move on to the next one. Um, so that was the celebrity of the moment, I guess. Right, right. Very Catholic you know? church. Yeah, I think that's cool. That's but uh, yeah. Right. I also feel like, and here I go talking again. Here I go over, explaining over you guys. Do it. No, you please, men with please. your podcast. Let me tell please, you something. Please. <laughs> I tried to say very nothing about the Me Too movement because all I read about is men getting in on it right? with their say-so. So sure. mostly I've been quiet. I understand. I thought that was an important one, though, because I think if there's anything happening, there's not people like willing to step out. And I think your general disassociation with, like, what had been going on in emo and punk is a good thing because a lot of people know who Jesse Lacey is and a lot of people might have something invested in that relationship and you don't give a fuck, which is good. And that guy needed to get called out and you're willing to do it. And I actually like appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And I think as I do think that there is too much of people just getting on stage and trying to explain the situation, I don't think there's enough people like going head to head with it. And really, like, calling the people out or, like, you know, really getting into it. So mm. when it happens, I don't, I don't think it's a problem to, to shame the people who have actually done the actions. And I don't think there's enough people doing it. So I appreciate it. Well, especially. I'm not in the industry, really. You know, we right. aren't. We're, we're like, um, made guys now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of are. We're not really you're, trying to do anything. You're we're De Niro. Just, we're just playing. There's we're playing. Someone, we've, got our, feel? we've got our. It feels pretty good. We're I got to tell you, it's, yeah. it feels good. It's not where I was two and a half years ago. I'll no. tell you that. <laughs> you know, just another, just just another number in the yeah. joint. <laughs> Getting my ass beat by like a bunch of white dudes. Wait, I thought that's you wanted. That's to another thing too. You can only be beat by a person of your tribe, your ethnic wait, wait, tribe. Wait, all right. So, so only is, white guys could beat me up, I, and then they lovingly they tell you. Afterwards, I didn't want to like, go back to. You this. know why we did that, right? You're cool, bro. Really? It's like, I didn't yeah, want to go back to this, but it. since you did, so oh, you, you wanted got to circle back to this so, so bad. bad. Well, there's two things I'm interested in. I'm still interested in what happened if you're willing to talk about it, and what you just said the actual jail politics of the fact that you apparently stumbled in to the black shower but were beaten by white guys. So were you, they were told to beat you for this, like, well, for uh, so this misstep? In that instance, a representative of uh, the brothers, that's the group. Yeah. There's others, brothers, Woods, and Southside, which okay. is a... Latinos. I know that from the POD song. Those dudes were cool. Yeah. <laughs> they do all the good artwork in there. Holy okay. shit. Like, kind of like. POD. Southtown. Uh, Southtown. It's all right, song. Keep going. All right. So, a representative from the black group went and talked to some dude in the white group and said, Your boy, like, fucked up. You have up, to do this. So, you need to make an example of him. And then they. Said, you know, it's gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt you more than it's gonna hurt me. <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> they didn't say a thing. They just took me in a cell and pounded me. Fuck. Lord. But uh, I'm um, sorry. That's how it worked. Yeah, that's crazy. And so, are you allowed to tie? You know, his vandalism charge and stuff like this. Can you talk at all about what actually happened? I trashed a car in a Motel Six in Carlsbad. Okay. Because I didn't like the w- way it looked. What was the I was having the a kind of psychotic episode, let's say that. But uh, let's, to put it in perspective, let's just think about this. I am a, um, at that point, was a, a person of modest income in his 40s and uh, who had a, a psychiatric crisis. Mm-hmm. And I'm on three years probation and did 60 years, 60 days of jail time. And just think about what is happening in this country right now, the billions of dollars that are being shifted offshore and these things with, you know, like no legal repercussions. Oh, yeah. None. Yeah. None. Mm-hmm. And I'm 
the, like I'm a, a made guy. I'm like a white guy with an education. So imagine then what it is for everyone of of color, of oh, anything else. Sure. Um, I'm telling you what you already know, but this I lived it for a moment, and I was, like, and I'm still living. I'm still on probation. I'm a first time offender, you know. Yeah. I messed up a car. Three years, I'm still a felon. It's crazy. Wow. So, is this is this an issue for you at all? Uh, traveling out of the, out of the U.S. It is. I can't travel internationally. Yeah. I have to get a permit for wherever I go. Right. Is that is that on the table? Is that something that this band is talking about? Oh, we want to go abroad for sure. Who wants to be in the U.S. right now? <laughs> I mean, other than like these shows, which are music events and art, you know, sure. cultural events are good, but yeah. But uh, I'm up for um, I'm going to be uh, free in about six months. Right on. So then we'll. we'll Any more U.S. shows planning or? Uh, we're playing a festival in Seattle in June, upstream. I think a new one. Sure. Yeah, I saw the lineup. It was cool. There's some good. Yeah, Hot Snakes are playing. Um, Flaming Lips. Flaming Murder Lips. City Devils. Uh, oh, wow. Zola okay. Jesus. Who I've never seen. It'll be cool. Any chance? I'm sure everyone's asked you this, but have you guys? Do you think you would ever write more stuff or what's? Yeah, we're we're. Um, that's our summer is going to just be trying to write. Awesome. Jam. Jam. You know. The way we used you, got to, any, like, you got any riffs? Bivouac era is kind of what we're process wanting to work feel. For Jawbreaker, how, how had it worked in the past? And you know, I don't. I'm trying to remember. We're all trying to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about it because everything has been kind of remedial now. Because we have a we we'll have a big show, and then we'll be like, God, we got to get tight on the right, material, right, right, the catalog. Right, sure. But the what we really want to do is just riff out and see what comes. So I'm spending the next month writing at home. And then we're going to converge in San Francisco and, and just go in a studio and see what happens. Do you usually write like riff first, not uh, melody first? It changed over time. But I think when I said bivouac, like I think we want to, I like the more um, band like jams gotcha. that we have mm -hmm. or Jet Black or songs like that, though, that only can be a, you know, as a unit. Anyone for all else, of us, just their heart beat a little faster. You said they're going to be writing. Like anybody else? <laughs> and I'm trying not to like freak the fuck out, but I'm doing. <laughs> for those of you who know me and have been in the room where they said, "Just leave Blake alone," which is <laughs> at least two out of the three people on this stage right now have done that with me. That's um, kind. That's kind. <laughs> you know, it's I, for our own. Uh, Excitement. We can't keep playing these same songs. Right. Oh, gosh, I mean, they're wonderful when people have not seen it. And, you know, we're, we're lucky that there's all these people who want to see it. But we have need new songs to make it exciting. Sure. Do you think about, like, do you have any lyrical ideas? Like, do you have a notebook you've kept, of, you know, anything like that? I have tons of notebooks, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm still remembering the process. Yeah. Usually yeah. it's just a line and then um, a guitar and then... You kind of extrapolate from there. There's something super special about the three of you guys together and the way you lock in. And because, I mean, I've seen Jets, Forgetters, Joan and I saw Thorns a couple of times together and all those great songs. I enjoyed all of them. But when that crew, like, like I figure as the crowd, we can feel it. It must be insane when you feel it. Well, I went to high school with Adam, the drummer. So there's a pretty deep, thing there and we all met in we met Chris in college which is now you know 30 years ago almost mm -hmm. so it, having had those relationships for so long and having learned how to play music together because we were kind of all of each other's first real band mm -hmm. that's I know bands have that I guess we have that too so it's like Weird shorthand you know psychic kind of stuff or you're like you want somebody to go somewhere and they're already going right, there. Right. In well, terms it's of interesting because you knew them so young, playing with them must be like, uh, it almost like trained you as the player you are, right? You know, after you play with somebody so long, did their influence eventually maybe like comes off on you and finds its way in even into your next band or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found it really hard to be in the beginning of Jets to Brazil. I was like, I don't know what I'm, how to do this. I mean, those are two very but different I, drummers, Chris and yeah, yeah, for sure. It was really that band was so fun because it was all all of us were kind of discovering like it's kind of like actually getting out of a grueling relationship and then seeing someone new. 
Right. I'm like, I can do whatever I want with this. <laughs> <laughs> First that, interview. That kind of was the, like, the playfulness of Jets to Brazil in the beginning. We're like, we could, I could get a Wawa pedal. <laughs> I, I could bring a Wawa pedal into the relationship. You know? I got it. Yeah. No I one would frown on that. I interviewed you for Alternative Press when uh, Four Corner Night came out. And it was my first interview I ever did. I was an intern there. Wow. And uh, did you I, still have the Jufro? Th- yes. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I remember. Are we calling it the Jufro? I remember. Uh, you can't. I asking know, you what, what influenced Sorry. the record, and you were like, this band will go, and they had like two records. I was like, oh, I should check this band out. Like, I didn't even, I had, didn't even heard of these bands at that time. Mm. That's probably Jeremy yeah. Chatelain, who is like very savvy to you. That's were those the, bands sort of a big influence on Jets? I mean, did you, did you get a lot of influences outside of punk and that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were all just like learning to listen to new, new old music. Um, because we were at that age, you know? Yeah. Is uh, Jawbreaker now, like, these shows you're doing, is it the first time you've ever been on a bus? We're not on a bus. You're not still not on a bus? No. Wow. Because we only do, like, two shows at a time. It's great. Backdrop <laughs> like that and no bus. Yeah, it comes in a I'm little uh, in a flight case. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. We just, we fly in and then uh, practice right. for a couple of days and then And you're using, play. are you flying in your gear or are you using rental gear? We are. I mean, we rent the cabinets and everything, but we bring the guitars and... For the Heads. for the Brooklyn shows, you you take an Uber home or how do you get home from Brooklyn? <laughs> What's your no, uh, the bands the bands and crew stayed at the Williamsburg Hotel. Okay, you know that over nice. on White there. It's, yep. it's very quiet. I'll tell you that they have these like triple reinforced windows, <laughs> which I loved. So you can't hear a thing. Um, it's party town. And the and I live here. I live in Brooklyn, but uh, I was like, I want to stay. I want to stay with you guys. So I stayed at the hotel with them because nice. I wanted to get in on it. <laughs> sure. Uh, so we just had a rental, a minivan. We nice. drive over to the Brooklyn Steel and then back. <laughs> Beautiful. A mere mile and a half or yeah. something. Yeah, it was great. And I took I took a train. I took that G home one day and fed my cats and like hung out with them in bed before the show. That's nice. And then went back to the Williamsburg. Yeah. That's cozy. Yeah, that's, that's great. Awesome. Yeah. So hey, man. Uh, I guess we're all going to Seattle. So we'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out. It's a great scene out there. Great it's music scene. It's awesome. Thank you so much. We couldn't yeah, think of, yeah, we, we couldn't think of a crew better, coming. especially you, to be on our 300th episode. Yeah. Hey, congratulations. So, going off track. Thank, yeah. thank you, Blake. 300. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are like Spartans. <laughs> I mean, Blake Schwarzenbach, everybody. Good Lord. Thank, thank you so much. You.